Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a glorious day here in Maranello, Italy for something that I've been looking forward to. It is time to reveal my Ferrari SF90 Stradale. I think we've probably all been waiting for this one, but we're here in the hometown of Ferrari, the heartland of it all, having driven on the Where's Shmi Euro Tour with the GTC Volusso V12, where today we're going to be heading over to the Pista di Fiorano, Ferrari's test track here right beside the factory to see the SF90 for the first time ever right in front of Enzo Ferrari's house. Needless to say, I am buzzing for this. I cannot wait. So let's hop on board the Lusso. There have been so many complexities to get this far, believe me. But let's get over to Fiorano circuit to go see the SF90 Stradale. <laughs> This is not a normal Ferrari factory collection. In fact, my car has already been, upon completion at the assembly line, to the UK because of the UK leaving the EU with Brexit. There are all sorts of complicated customs and tax implications. So it had to go over to go to my dealer, HRO and Ferrari London, to get the PDI done, the pre-delivery inspection. Then it went over to Topaz Detailing, like all new Schmimobiles, to get full coverage paint protection film so it's ready to drive away later. And then, obviously, we had to do the invoicing, I had to pay for it, do the VAT, all of the taxes and get it registered so that we could put number plates on it to then with the help of the italian customs in this region bring it back to marinello so that today we can head and go and see it and that's all been very very complicated but having been back here with my first ever ferrari the ff with my earlier lasso now with this lasso this is the first ever new one this is something a little bit different and it still can't quite be a normal factory collection because the factory is actually closed at the moment to external visitors for all of the health reasons which means something a little bit different today thanks to the communications team and heading over to the Pista di Fiorano but we've already done a couple of thousand miles in this car and in fact if I just start it quickly <laughs> that V12 is glorious it is so good and I've enjoyed driving this car so much already, it's good times. Anyway, it's a short hop from here. We'll go via some of the sights and scenes of Marinello as we make our way to the Pista di Fiorano. So let's do this. Let's head on instantly, this V12. Just dreamy. The SF90 is so different. It's basically a spaceship, a thousand horsepower, hybrid, three electric motors, totally different type of Ferrari. This is a four-wheel drive, comfortable, luxurious, pleasant, practical car loaded with leather. Just a very, very nice place to be and having it here and the heads that it turns and the feeling of having a Ferrari in Ferrari's hometown is unlike anything else. It feels right where it should be and driving the SF90 later on, that is going to be a different league of amazing. Right. Let's head on out and just even a gentle acceleration in here. What a noise. Right, let's head on. Marinello is calling. One of the most awesome things about arriving here in Marinello is that we go over this bridge and then right in front of us in the center of the roundabout is the Cavallino, the prancing horse, sat right there. And then just to the right of it, you will see the factory. This is where it all happens. This is where cars like this have been built. Well, they've been engineered, designed, put together, created all the way through. And we're going to head around now past the old factory, actually, to go towards Pista di Fiorano, which I have actually driven before. It is an epic place to drive on that tarmac where the F1 cars drive, where all of the different cars are tested, where every car like the SF90 gets a lap time that's communicated and where in fact I drove an SF90 as well. But today we're heading there with the Lasso and the SF90 is going to be waiting. There are a few words to describe the significance of this location, the history and heritage of Ferrari, motorsports, Formula One, the road cars, everything about it. But as we come past here on the left hand side, this is the original historical gate, the old entrance, the archway, and we're driving past. But so many places I've visited many times over the years. And now to collect a car. This is a dream 
from being younger to be here to pick up a Ferrari. It is not long to go now. In fact, right up ahead of us is a barrier that borders Fiorano. But if we turn to the right, just here, down to our right-hand side is the entrance. Pista di Fiorano to be here. And the fact that we're about to enter where my car is waiting. So we'll have to hop out, go and sign our lives away, and I think jump straight in to go and see this. Here we are then, inside the heart of Pista di Fiorano, Ferrari's test track in the center of Maranello. And this is a pretty legendary place to be. In fact, this courtyard where we are right now with well, one Schmimobile and another that we can take a look at in just a moment is right in front of Enzo Ferrari's house. There is a lot of history in where we are right now. And in fact, VIP customers are sometimes invited to come and stay here. How cool is that? In the heart of Fiorano, where I've been a few times. I came here with my Ferrari FF a fair while back. I drove an 812 Superfast on the track itself. And in fact, the day I drove an SF90 Stradale for the first time ever, I drove it out on the local roads to Maranello and then came here for a few laps on track. And if that didn't whet the appetite, I don't know what did. But I think it's time to take a look then and reveal to you for the first time ever in full my Ferrari SF90 Stradale. How good does that look? In blue electrico with some sun poking through the clouds. It is a spectacular machine. We're going to have a full run through of the specifications, some of the details, because I spent a lot of time working with HRO in London to go through the spec, to add lots of bespoke elements, to make a car that would stand out and be my perfect 1,000 horsepower Ferrari supercar. I say supercar, but it's basically touching on hypercar territory. 1,000 horsepower with the hybrid system. Lots to experience with that ahead. The main color is one that's quickly actually becoming quite famous. It's called Blue Electrico. It is a multi-layer, beautiful, metallic, pearlescent, royal blue paint. It looks stunning in the sunshine, and it's been to Topaz already in the UK. So the whole car has full paint protection film over every panel, all of the blue, the contrast gloss black that we have for the roof, and also this piece across the front of the windscreen, which just slightly shortens the aero or visual appearance of the front, which is obviously extended for aero. We'll talk a lot more about that down the line. I've gone for silver wheels. We'll touch on those in a moment. I've added all of the carbon fiber, but let's just talk, I think, about the plate. In traditional style, of course, we have a Schmee plate. We have the 20, and I will confess, I'm slightly clutching at straws with this one, but it was launched as a model year 2020 car. It's got two powertrains. It has 220 electric horsepower. It kind of works. If you can dream it, you can do it. A quote from Enzo Ferrari, which I think really sums this up. If you can dream it and you work hard for it, you can do it. And here we are with an SF90 Stradale. So we've got lots of carbon fiber, the piece here in the center. In fact, you can see the radar cruise control that tucks in just underneath the plate back there. That's the ADAS, the Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. And I know some of you are saying, why would you put a number plate on the front of a car like this? But it's a British car. I'm gonna be driving it in lots of places. It's the law, you have to have it. Alas, the plinth was installed, it's on the car. We've got lots more carbon as we come round here. For example, you can see all of the subtly integrated aero that you have down there. And also up here on the headlights, air management going directly through there for some cooling. The silver wheels, a touchy topic. I know for many, a lot of people these days like their supercars with black wheels or with the dual tone with the diamond touched. These are the lightweight forged optional upgrade wheels but I love silver wheels against blue. The Lusso has silver wheels against blue. The silver wheels on my other cars against the different colors, they always look so nice, but I've made it a touch sportier with all of the yellow touches. Like we have the yellow center caps on the wheels. We've got the optional Scuderia shields worn on the sides of the car. And even down here also yellow for the brake calipers. Obviously a few different options for those. As we continue along, we've got the carbon fiber side skirts. We've got the carbon fiber for the air intakes back here as well. Obviously the cooling being managed between the two of those. If we come around towards the back, and the diffuser. We have the same story, lots of carbon fiber, all of the exterior carbon. We've got the reversing camera tucked in down here. We've got the chromed exhaust tailpipe sitting very prominently. We'll come back to the engine in a moment and have a proper look at that because I'd like to show you the interior of this. Now the interior is where we spent a lot of time to get this specification perfect, to get it absolutely spot on. So check this out. It is very smart, it is very elegant. It's mainly in sabia leather, 
this light cream. We've got all of the blue sterling accents. So all of these seat inserts you can see, those were actually optional. Normally they would be in black. It's the style seat, so you have some of these silver finishes as well. But there's a lot more blue to it. For example, the headliner, the door cards and the dashboard, all in the dual tone with the blue and the Sabia. Even the seat backs I did in blue as well to match. And down at the side, I really like this flash that you get of the blue down here with the seat controls, the door cards themselves to add details like the blue uh, door grab handles here to have the blue stitching, to have the uh, Savia inlays. It's a magnificent place, but I want to show you in the back and probably also in the front because a big part of this is the engine. A thousand horsepower, four litre twin turbo V8, three electric motors, one onto the rear axle, two up towards the front. And then inside here, Look at how low it sits down there in the engine bay. And I went for the red engine top. You could replace that actually with a carbon one, but I really wanted that traditional red Ferrari engine appearance. What's amazing though, is how deeply it sits down there in the engine bay, right behind the bulkhead, right up at the front. They've clearly worked a lot on the packaging to make sure that that works. And it's part of, well, propelling you fairly extraordinarily, to be honest. So I think I should take a seat inside my SF90 Stradale delicately does this. We need to keep the interior looking sharp, looking clean. So <laughs> here we are. This is it. The blue sterling steering wheel. We've got all of the touch controls. Do you know one thing we need to do? One thing that we really need to do on the screen here is a bit of protective film. This is going to be immensely satisfying. I know it right now. Let's um, peel this off. How does it work? Does it come out from under there? Done. We'll leave that there for the moment. Blue on the steering wheel. Do you know what? I know the key's in here. Let's just wake it up for a moment. Foot on the brake. I'm going to start this. It starts instantly firing off the electronics, off the hybrid battery. Obviously, there's a lot to learn in terms of the technical side, in terms of how it works, in terms of what it does. We've got the passenger display here. We've got all of the controls that point straight to you. We've got the lift system. We've got the cameras. The way you set your mirrors, for example, you tap here and then you move on the little toggle. These lovely shift paddles into gear, into neutral. It sounds mega, this thing. It's a proper deep, angry grumble. We've got the JBL upgraded sound system as well. There are so many options to run through. Actually, you know what? Let's turn it off for the moment. It just sounds special. So what I'd like to do also is open up this front storage. I think we need to have the, now maybe I need to do that from the key. See, learning as I go here, we've got the new keys still packaged up. Pop open the front. Obviously we've also got the hybrid charger for this. So the fuel cap is on one side and the hybrid charger is on the other all of which I need to learn. If we come around here, how do I open the front? There we go. We've got the catch just in here. Inside, we've got my personalization specifications plaque. That tells you all of the options that I've gone for on this car. We we'll see the more you have there, the crazy your spec is. We've got the hybrid battery charger inside here, which I've done some reading in. It charges at 3.5 kilowatts um, on the car regardless of what you have it plugged into. So whether it's on a three pin or two pin socket, depending where you are or a type two or on a fast charger, it will go at that speed. We've got the package just here, which has all of your tools and your towing eye cover and some gloves and things, which is quite nice to have. We've got the uh, tire inflator. We've got all the instruction books. And then we have a look here at the RACE or the race hybrid electric motor system, which looks really, really cool as well. So there's a lot to learn and there's not a lot of luggage space, which is probably why you remember we have come here with the GTC4 Lusso as well, so that we can continue this adventure without running out of space, because otherwise that would be a little bit of a problem. But how amazing is this to have revealed my SF90 Stradale in front of Enzo Ferrari's house, specially arranged with huge thanks to the communications team here at Ferrari in Maranello. This is not a normal experience, but it sure is something very, very special to have been able to do. And I cannot thank everyone involved enough for making that possible. Okay, here we are. It is time to drive this out. Slightly surreal moment. Start it up, that soft 
patter of the V8, which is now warm. We've had it running a little bit. Goodness me. We've got the comfort on the steering wheel. Can move around the mirrors. Takes a little bit of adjusting and getting used to the touch controls. That should be good. Got the electric steering column. I need to learn everything, but for the moment we have slightly run out of time and we need to head on out. So here we go, the first little bit of driving. Reverse is down on that. I've got the reversing camera in front of me. <laughs> is this really happening? Am I driving my SF90 Stradale? And am I driving it right here inside Fiorano, Enzo's house right beside us? As we now head on through then, out we go. Around past the track which surrounds us. <laughs> oh my gosh this is unreal we're in hybrid at the moment everything in the standard setup goodness right off we roll full automatic air conditioning running i need to work out all of the different settings and everything about this but for the moment this is major major pinch like surreal scenario to get my head around what are we doing right now we're gonna go do the documents i think to exit and then we go from there out we head from the gates we are now on the public road for the first time in my sf90 stradale okay i have so much to learn about this car at the moment i mean i've driven one before hey we're in hybrid we're electric the engine is off how bizarre is that? We're now in a 200 horsepower, front wheel drive, electric Ferrari supercar. This just feels totally bonkers right now, to be honest. Everything's kind of happened <laughs> in a bit of a blur, the way these things are. Oh, that's cool. This is nice, it feels so good. This is really, really special. I'm driving in my new SF90 here in Maranello. My goodness. That is completely childhood dream, boyhood dream. If you had asked me as a youngster, you know, what I would dream of one day, to be driving my new Ferrari in Ferrari land in Italy. <laughs> this is, this is, wow. <laughs> to go past the Museo Ferrari here. Ferrari Museum. <laughs> Indicators on here, we're just going to pull in for a moment. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. What are um, we doing? Portofino, just chilling there. And here we are. <laughs> oh, look at that reflection. I just caught a reflection in the mirrors. Oh, good. Wow. Yeah, yeah, let's just pull over here for a moment and work out what we're doing next. We had a quick pause, but we're going for a little drive. First up though, is going back past the factory entrance. <laughs> At some point, this car was inside there, which is really cool. That's where your normal factory collection would be when those are up and running and when it's possible to return here for that kind of thing. Obviously for today, to even have this opportunity is out of this world. There's so much about this which is super familiar because I've been lucky enough to drive a lot of mid-engine Ferrari supercars, you know, the likes of the Pista, the F8, the 488, the SF90 on an occasion. But there's so much about it also which is completely alien to me. And there are a lot of settings I need to go through with all of this, with all of the systems, to have them exactly how I want it. Your usual stuff, to be honest. The things like, do the door mirrors fold? Does it automatically lock? That stuff and how to personalise it all but it instantly feels so seriously cool to be in this car. And it looks so nice as well. Just looking around at all of this, the way it's presented, the way you have these inlays with the Alcantara, the way all the way to the left, you have the air vent painted to match the leather color of the dashboard. They don't leave it just black or something that would look messy. And then the carbon fiber parts as well. And Oh, it's just so lovely. It's so lovely. And obviously, I'm going to point out the obvious right here. Brand new car. We, well, we now have 43 miles on the Odo down here. So 
65 kilometers, 44 miles now. So obviously that means driving it super, super gently until you get to a thousand kilometers. Then be the rules. And I like looking after longevity of the car. I want to keep this forever. Obviously maintenance, warranty, all of that. So we'll look after it properly and enjoy it as we should. But where we're going to head is a road I've driven quite a few cool Ferraris on before, just outside of town. Let's do this. I'm not going to go into too much detail yet about the driving experience with this, but we have some lovely roads here. And even though I'm being fairly gentle with it, the car is absolutely brilliant. Now, this is a road that I have driven also in the 812 Superfast and in the SF90 before. So to now drive it in my SF90 is pretty special. But I've just been playing around a little bit with the various different driving modes. You've got the E-Manatino. If you go down, I had it in qualifying just then as an experiment, but down into performance. Or if you go into hybrid, it runs so much in electric. Now I've got it in manual at the moment. Let me just put it back into automatic there. And you find yourself instantly in e-drive and then you've got your 25 kilometers of full electric driving and you've obviously got the typical manatino as well where you can change between wet sport race ct off and everything off but what i like the most about it which we'll experience so much more of is on roads like this where the tarmac is pretty chopped up i mean look at this if you're driving in a normal mid-engine supercar like the others from my collection pretty much in their entirety this would be really uncomfortable but what this car does so well is be a mid-engine supercar that's pleasant on the road and so few do that these days the suspension is supple over these bumps it feels comfortable it nicely disguises the weight obviously you're carrying all of the electric motors for the hybrid system and the battery as well but it just it just does its thing in such a nice way and this is what I experienced when I first drove one. You just feel comfortable in it. You just feel chilled in it. But this is why I went for the non Assetto Fiorano configuration. I went for the road spec car because for me, this is a road car. I've got other track cars in my garage. I'll buy other track cars in the future. And even though at the point of this point of time, it might be the most powerful car I own, it also happens to be the one that I want to drive on the road to enjoy like this, to just drive around wherever we may be that weird electrical whir as we come almost to a standstill in silence. I'm not gonna lie, that has been a pretty exhausting day, but what a day. And again, familiar garage, because in the past, so many of my cars have been right here. And in fact, when I bought my first ever brand new supercar, which was the McLaren 675LT back in October, 2015, on the day I collected it, we drove over to Italy. I think the next day it was parked there. Well, this time around on the day I've collected my first ever brand new Ferrari supercar, it's parked in exactly the same spot. And what a car it is, what a car it is. And although most of these might be cars that don't do very many miles in their life, I'm going straight into this one with the intention to drive it. You can bet it's going to do big adventures I want to try and daily it as well, back to trying to daily a supercar because, hey, hybrid, electric, right? I can drive it to and from an e-mode, e-drive even. And there will be some fun outings to test it. Autobahn, Nürburgring, other things of that ilk. And obviously with the GTC4 Lasso and company, this is a moment of the mind taking time to calibrate and make sense of it all because we have had quite the logistics exercise to make all of this happen. And everybody who's been part of that, you know who you are. Thank you very much for making it happen. And here we are, ready for the rest of the Where's Shmi Euro Tour with my SF90 Stradale. <laughs> that sounds mental. So thank you very much to each and every one of you for being part of this journey. It is so much appreciated, you have no idea. That has been the stuff of dreams, while not specifically a Ferrari factory collection, to have picked up the car in Maranello in the land of Ferrari and to have that opportunity thanks to the Ferrari communications team is just mind blowing. This is the start of a very exciting Ferrari adventure. SF90 in Lusso, that is not gonna be all. That's all I'll say for now. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. That's it for this time, the collection of the SF90. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.